Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, man, y'all seen the thumbnail. Y'all see what I'm about to talk about. Let's get right into it. With that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. But most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. I think that that was like one of the strongest ways that they could say, no, look at me. You know, and I'm not going to go and hide. And I'm I am proud of because I remember getting my last name on my back when I was a kid. That was the first tat I got. And I went to school the next day and I wore a slingshot. I wouldn't even wear a T-shirt because I wanted everybody to see that tat, Holmes. And, you know, the homeboys are like, oh, I you, you you know, you got you got tat at home. That's feed me. But I saw teachers and other people and they looked down their nose at that marking on my back that meant so much to me. And I just remember thinking, you know what? I don't care, man. Like this, this emblem, this badge of armor that I'm wearing right now, it's way, way, way more magnetic and, and powerful to me than their opinion. Of I want to say this, right? In the gang culture, since so back in the day up until this point, you know, there is a difference between gang related tattoos and political tattoos, but it's only amongst the gang culture the gang aspects and individuals that carry these ideologies and teach one another and educate new generations to come about these, the significance of these tattoos. But when you look at it from societal standpoint, you look at it from law enforcement, DA, prosecutors. And to me, it's a, I think to me personally, it's a beautiful thing, especially when you, when I see a lot of homeboys and like, I've been, since I've been out, I've been seeing a lot of cultura, black and gray art, our Mexicanos. Even the, even the Asian culture has adopted some of the Chicano style artwork and the Chicano lifestyle, as you can see, as I'm publicly displaying. So our culture, the Mexicano culture, where it all stems from, it's been highly influential to a lot of people. I see Edgars nowadays, this new generation, the generation, you know, they still wearing the 501s with the pro clubs, dressing like us with the Air Force Ones, just different haircuts. They're still getting tattoos on their face. It doesn't even matter. See, the thing about it is you'll see a lot of regular individuals who are Mexicanos who take pride in Aztec artwork. But Aztec artwork was manipulated to mean different things in jail. We consolidated Aztec teachings with gang teachings and gang culture. And I think we polluted the idea of what the representation of our Raza's heritage really is by incorporating it in our gang lifestyle. You know, people have to shed blood to earn these tattoos. And it's a trip, right? You know, Cesar Chavez came out with the Huelga bird to, si to signify, you know, the, the, the farmlands and the farm workers and their strike, La Huelga. And what did the big homies do? Snatch it up, use it as a representation that we know we're, since we're identified as farm meadows, all right, this is a symbolism that's gonna represent us farmers, how we've been identified. And we're gonna adopt this concept and provide it to XIV soldiers, to Norteños, who were birthed from warfare to protect the people. I don't know if there's a historical phase that happened back in the day, like the brown berries had a chapters everywhere representing for the brown culture and the brown cultura from, uh, from up north, but I've never heard in the history that I was ever taught, I never met a Norteño older than me that could honestly say, hey bro, back, back then when we all became Norteños, started working for the Carnales, the Nuestra Raza, that we actually went to the streets and started helping farm workers. We started helping the neighborhoods. We started helping the little tienditas out there from being extorted by other people. So instead, we took the symbol of a huelga bird and made it to identify a Norteño Sodalo. Northern structure, Nuestra Raza. Then we created XIV soldiers, then the X4 and the 14, so on and so forth. All signifying marks that weren't given out freely and weren't done publicly and back in the day like they are today. Back then, you know, it was a symbol of you got it, you earned it. And the only place to earn it was in jail. But today's generation, and up until 2023, everybody gets it. Young kids that just get jumped in the hood and their first tattoo is, man, I want to get an X4. That was, my, that was my first tattoo, four dots on my eye. One dot over here, four dots over there. Then I put the TC over the one dot. Half the time, you're going to see a lot of youngsters out here getting these signifying marks. 
these symbolisms, not even earning them. And now that now they can go to jail and not really get tattoo checked by the Northerner program because it doesn't even matter. It's just that now it's a representation. Now it's a symbol of it's an identifying trait to say who they are as Norteños. And just like in the 90s, if you were fresh off the streets, prison first time, and they seen the X4, the 14, the Huelga bird, yeah, you would be questioned. Hey, did you earn that? Who gave that to you? Who said you can get it? If all you can say is, hey, bro, I was in the hood, the homie was doing a tattoo, he was fresh out of prison, he hooked me up. Oh, yeah, they would jot his name down for future references if he ever came to prison. But now you're going to put it, they're going to put a banger in your hand and say, hey, man, go blast somebody. You're going to earn that. Same thing for the Sureño program. And it's a trip, right? See, Norteños are not allowed to get Aztec culture anymore because of the validation process. We started seeing the administration validate Sureños, Mexican Mafia members, Southsiders that had this cultura tattooed on them. It was automatically a couple of points. Because the Sureño program obviously identifies themselves with Aztec culture. You see a lot of Norteños, some had it. Most of the time you'll see their barrios, Salinas, San Jose, you know, Tulare County, Kings County, Norte, X4, XIV, so on and so forth. And then I have like just some regular artwork, urban artwork. But the Sureño culture in Southern California take great pride. They have a great sense of pride in representing the Aztec culture. And in those Aztec culture and those designs, they adopted them, turned them into gang meanings and gang symbols and gang identifications that caused prison administration to validate Sureños off tattoos, not just the 13, not just the Sur, Aztec work as well. Let me give you an example. This one right here is the Jaguar. And since you guys not be able to read it, I'm going to read it out for you guys. These guys were high ranking members of the Aztec military elite. So when you see Sureños with this tattoo, it meant something. But just like the Jaguar was a high-ranking member, there was actually special forces in the Aztec military elite in that same culture back in the day because they were militant-minded individuals, which was the Aztec Eagle. Now, they were higher than the Jaguars. These guys were considered a special class of the infantry of the Aztec military, special forces. Then you had the Jaguars. So when you see these two symbols on a Sureño's body, that identifies them as camaradas. That identifies them as the inner circle of camaradas who work for big homies. In the same fashion that Norteños were on the streets getting these X4s, these 14s, these four dots, and not earning them, not putting in work, not knowing the meaning behind the Norteño cause, the Norteño struggle, didn't have no idea other than, you know, as Northern Chicanos, you, rep you were represented by the X4, the 14, and the four dots. Back in the day, before it got watered down, individuals had to really go to prison and catch a case, take somebody's wind, shed blood, make a sacrifice in order to keep those tattoos, or you would get hurt for that. Same thing for the Sureño culture. A lot of Southsiders used to come up in their hoods and, ta and tattoo Sur on them, S-U-R, and not even know what Sur stand for. They just thought it was an abbreviation for Sureños, a Southsider. Didn't know that Sur stand for Southern United Raza. So a lot of young homies were going to jail and getting either blasted or having to blast somebody because they had to earn it. They couldn't get Campolero at all. But a Norteño can get Ispo or Ispo Me tatted on him as well. Like the Sureños who got Capulero, that was a sick, that pretty much meant Sureños and getting the numeral numbers in Aztec, you know, the two bars with the three dots, they, they would get paid, a, they would have to pay a heavy price, a penalty for that. There was, there was cases where a lot of individuals were walking around with lists and a lot of individuals were on that list because they got the Sur, they got, they got Sureño tatted in Aztec, they got the 13 on them that they weren't allowed to get. See, back then it was about, hey, who blessed you with that? A Mexican mafia banner had to be the one to bless you to get the Jaguar, to get the Eagle, to get the Tres on you, the Sur. If you just got that tatted while you were in your neighborhood not knowing any better, which a lot of people didn't know no better what these tattoos really meant and how they were so political and, collect and connected to political agendas in prison, we're getting hurt. We're getting blasted over them. Now you got a bunch of young northerners and southerners out here on the streets and like i said in plenty of other videos they don't know what they're banging for they just know what they're identified as because of the hood they come up from the area in which they live in and the homies that they look up to they're not being properly educated a lot of these young norteños that are 14 15 and 16 all they know how to do is yell norte or yell sur sureño their barrio that's all they know that's all they ever been taught 
And then when they get to prison, they're force fed this education. They're force fed to learn. Their hands are being forced to put in work and earn what they've been representing this whole time. They no longer have a choice based on these identifying marks and these symbols that people are just freely getting tatted on them. And it's funny, you can actually put an X4 or X3 on a 14, 15 year old kid as an older homie and think he looks cool and got him feeling like he looks cool. And all he got to do is go to a Burger King, go to a shopping center, and he has an X4 right here looking for clothes and his, ex, his opposition sees that and just don't even ask questions. He don't need to. He already has the identifying traits right there to indicate what he is. So I ain't got to ask him what he from or what he bangs. I can just blow his wig off and just leave him right then and there. So imagine that. Being a Southsider, getting these tattoos from your vado because you see your older homies paroling to the streets from the Pinta I've did 10, 20 years, got the Aztec culture on them, you just think it looks bad. Then you get that same tattoo and you go to jail and they'll be like, hey, bro, who blessed you with that? What Theo blessed you with that? Who's your pops? Who do you work for? And you can't identify what it means, what it stands for, whether it's the Sureño culture or the Aztec culture. You don't know what this Jaguar really means. You don't know what that G-cell really means. That's, you know, it's a shield of battle. That means you're a warrior, that you've been to battle before, that you fought for the suit. You don't know that. So when you get questioned, you don't know that. You can either get blasted right there on the yard for not knowing better. Or you know what? You can go blast somebody, but when you go to the black, the homies are going to blast you as a checada or a calentada for getting a tattoo without permission. Those tattoos belong to an inner circle of people. And the same thing for XIV, 14, X4. But now you see it all over everybody today. And they, these kids don't know what they're doing. These kids don't even know what it represents and how much it's going to get them in the wreck later on down the road. I'm going to bring one of my subscribers on and he's going to break down the difference of a resident Southsider, Sureño, Camarada, how you earn each title, what their roles consist of when it comes to the Sureño program, the SUD program that takes place in the prison system, so on and so forth to break it down. But these tattoos, a lot of these kids are walking around with these tattoos not realizing what they're putting on their bodies permanently, permanently. See, the thing about me is I got the 14 to represent my cousin, but also I was a hardcore Norteño gangbanger back in the day. The Norte on my back, you know, I've, 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 uh, that's something I'm not going to cover up because it's, it's part of my past. It's part of my history. It's part of who I was. Yeah, I'm going to put artwork around it. Yeah, my tattoos don't help the argument. My tattoos on my head don't help the argument. But it's part of the, it's part of the culture that I, I, I take beauty in because I love Chicano art. That's one of my favorite things to draw and get tattooed and do tattoos is Chicano art. We've done a lot as a culture with our cultura. And the way everybody, even outside our ethnicity, is getting it tatted all over them. We've set a great example and precedence when it comes to our tattoos, our styles, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we conduct ourselves, our image alone. It just sucks that, you know, prison politics kind of tainted that image a lot more than what it should have been tainted. Utilizing just regular heritage to symbolize mafias, organizations, gang crime, gang cultures, gang ideologies. Somewhere along the way, it got polluted to just nothing but political nonsense when all it is is a representation of how we express ourselves as a cultura, whether it's Southern culture or Northern culture. And it sucks because you're going to see a lot of kids getting this stuff, not really, not realizing what they're putting on their body, and they're going to have to pay for it later. And the penalties are going to be severe, whether it's with his own blood or somebody else's blood. So my subscriber wanted me to share that with you guys, man. He wanted, to, he wanted to make sure the kids understood that with getting these gang tattoos on them, yeah, it looks cool on social media. It looks cool to post on Snap. It looks cool to look cool in front of your homies or in front of this little hainita that you're trying to get her number from and take behind a, a trash can or something or behind the homie's house. Yeah, it looks cool until you realize the severity of it and how serious it really gets and how these tattoos need to be earned, but not only earned, what you got to do to earn them. That these organizations got too lax now everybody's getting them and it's may, it's going to become a bigger cultural issue when now everybody's walking around with x4s and xivs on their face and x3s on their face he said it pretty much makes it a lot more easier for your enemies to identify who you are and most importantly law enforcement to identify who you are he goes so re in reality we're just dooming our own culture from the gate and when he said that i was like bro that's you make man you make me you make perfect sense man you honestly you make perfect sense and you know, so I already had tattoos on my face. I put bigger ones on my face. I've tried to look for programs to get them lasered off. They're quite expensive, but still. You know, maybe one day I could pay 
to get my tattoos removed and just, you know, represent the art in our culture and not the gang symbols and the gang aspects of it, just the cultura itself, because I'm a big fan of Chicano art. Let me know what you guys think about this subject, man. Is it true, man? Is it did we uh, did we dilute our Aztec heritage and our, our Mexican culture by utilizing these symbols, these this artwork? Taking the, taking the concepts and meanings and backgrounds from our heritage and, and, and getting them involved in the gang culture as a means to say, hey, bro, if you, you want to get the Aztec counter, you got to blast somebody. You want to get this eagle, you need to blast somebody. And you want to get this Nahuatl uh, uh, numbers on you, you got to blast somebody. Did we misconstrue our heritage to serve a different purpose than what it should have been, which was just representing, you know, being Mexicano, being Chicano, being... You know, whatever it is that you represent, whatever, however you identify yourself, Mexican-American, Mexican, whatever the case may be. I'm asking you guys. I would really like to know your guys' opinion on this, uh, this matter. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.